Well, I think uh, I should be live now. Hello and welcome <laughs> again, Mike Rope Hunter here. And uh, yes, uh, I'd like to welcome all of you uh, to my second live stream. And uh, today I'd like uh, to have a look at a few commercially prepared microscope slides. I already put them out here. Um, and uh, I prepared uh, 12 slides today and I'd like to um, yeah, basically share them with you. And uh, I hope uh, that, uh, yeah, it's going to be an enjoyable live stream for you. Before I start, uh, start out, I want to give you a little bit of background information here from where I've got the slides and in case you're interested or where you can buy also microscope slides. So first of all, it's really important. Um, I'm not affiliated with the company, but these are commercial microscope slides that were prepared for educational reasons. So um, in other words, um, yeah, for schools, because I'm a teacher. And for this reason, we in um, our school, we have several slide boxes that we make available to our students. And then uh, during the lessons, uh, the students can look um, at the specimens. And uh, what I've done today is I've selected uh, 12 uh, slides. By the way, this is the web address of the company that, uh, is, uh, that sells them. Again, I'm not affiliated with them, just in case uh, you're interested, okay? Um, so how does a slide box look like? Um, because I already took them out. I've, we've got several of those here. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you open this what, a slide box of 25, for example, as you can see over here, um, it's uh, still typed out using an old typewriter. So those slide boxes here are pretty old already. Well, around 20, 25 years, um, but they're quite, uh, quite good uh, still. And over here, I've got another slide box. Yeah, and yeah, there are 50 slides in here, yeah. Yep. And basically what I've done is I've selected uh, 12 of them. Um, and uh, when you look at uh, the slide box, you're going to see that some of the slides, um, uh, yeah, they have this interesting ring here. And these are so-called sealed slides. Uh, they put some nail polish um, or similar uh, paint uh, around it uh, because uh, this uh, paint uh, prevents uh, um, this uh, paint uh, prevents uh, an, an exchange of moisture um, and uh, some of the mounting media they um, should not dry out completely and therefore they put this protective sealing around them yeah um, I've already received the first uh, few questions here greetings from South Africa greetings from yes Austria in Europe because this is also one of the questions here if I'm from Germany um, no I'm not uh, I'm from Austria so it's a neighboring country of, of, of Germany. Yeah, um, however, those slides here are uh, from Germany. Um, and uh, I just wanted to tell you where uh, we got them from. Um, so what I've done is the following. If you visit this web address over here, okay, um, I just want to show you. I've uh, opened the website um, as well. This is a PDF. And uh, yeah, what you were able to see here, up, it's kind of a little bit too large now. Um, what you're able to see here is a, a PDF where they're uh, essentially, uh, it's a catalog um, of all of the slides that the company is selling. So in case you're interested, um, yeah, in case you're interested, uh, you can have a, you can have a look, uh, you can have a look at this as well. And uh, this is where our school um, obtained those slides. So you, the hundreds of them, thousands of the of slides that you can order, because many of them are also used uh, by uh, for medical training by med students, for example, or biology students, and, and so on for university. Yeah. So, uh, but what I'd like uh, to do is is um, I, I'd simply like to show you some of those slides, and um, I'd like to talk a little bit. Uh, um, um, about those. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, you can please uh, post them in the chat. And uh, I don't know if I'm able to answer all of those questions that you have, uh, but in any case, if you have any requests, if you want me to put something under the microscope in an upcoming live stream, then please also post that and I'll try to do what I can, okay? Yeah, um, greetings from Italy, greetings from South Africa, greetings from Lebanon, <laughs> yeah, all over the world. So I'm going to now switch over to the microscope view and the first one, um, the first slide, no, here, back here again. The first slide here, that is uh, uh, trichinella. That's a parasite. It's it's a worm. It's a nematode worm, which uh, forms uh, basically, which embeds inside muscle, okay? Um, and you can get that um, by eating uh, pork meat, which has not been properly cooked. And uh, it's quite interesting because if we're going to look um, at this, we're able to see those nematode worms inside the muscle. So I've uh, now switched over to the microscope view. You can see um, down here, okay, here. And this is always uh, the microscope. Let me turn on the light here as well. There's a little lamp here. You can barely see the, uh, the, the magnification now. And um, we're going to have a look here. And um, 
at the low power magnification, I'm not getting the full field of view, unfortunately. Um, but what you see, all of those red things that you see, um, that's muscle. Okay, um, and uh, I'm already able to see some of those cysts of, of the parasite. And as a matter of fact, I need to focus a little bit here. So you see the muscle fibers, these are all of the red things, but here now two of them right next uh, to my head. I, I have a difficulty pointing to it, okay? Um, yeah, but over there, you um, you know what, I'm simply going to go in. This is a, an encapsulated um, worm, trichinella worm, okay? So this is, uh, yeah, right next uh, on the level of my eyeglasses on the other side, okay? Yeah, yeah this is basically um, an, a, a capsule of this parasite. And uh, yeah, and when you look around, you see, ah, here's another one. Um, this is a spiral-shaped worm, and um, what it ha what happens is, is if you eat uh, pork which has not been properly cooked and which contains uh, those cysts inside the pork meat, um, then uh, what happens is that those worms, they come out in the intestine, they start to mate, they produce eggs, and the worms that come out of uh, the eggs will then spread over the blood system and the lymph lymphatic system to the muscles, and then they will actually form those cysts inside uh, the muscles of the human being as well. Yeah. So that's why it's important to always eat, uh, not eat, <laughs> cook, uh, cook uh, meat properly. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you want to now see how this actually looks in real life, um, I was actually able on um, in Wikipedia. Look at this. Okay, here it is. No, that's not the, uh, that's unfortunately not the right one over here. No, that's another one that I wanted to show you. Now, in any case, in Wikipedia, there is, if you uh, type in Trichinella in Wikipedia, then you're able to um, also um, uh, see a picture of this. It's uh, just a spiral shaped uh, a worm. Now, if you kind of wonder a little bit why the muscle looks a little bit different, I mean, here, for example, the muscle fibers, they look like patches, and here, they're a little bit longer. And this is because it depends a little bit in the direction in which the, 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 the fibers go when they were cut. And uh, um, sometimes they were cut transversely, sometimes they were cut longitudinally. So all of those red things here are the muscle fibers. And I want to show you something else here. Um, is this because if you really go up with the magnification further, Okay, and I'm going to maybe increase the light intensity a little bit as well. Um, then you should be able to see, hopefully, I need to change the correct filter and, as well and refocus. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to see here, but um, it's very, very small um, to see. Then you're able to see that there are um, little you know, so-called striations. Uh, but it's almost too difficult to see here. Um, the resolution is not quite uh, quite good, but if you look at the fibers itself, then you very finely you might be able to see that there's a light light and dark bands, almost like a, a zebra. Um, there are the um, alternating light and dark bands, and these are um, basically the protein fibers um, of the muscle here. Yeah, yeah, here, especially in in the white part here. Yeah, and right next to my eyeglasses, there is this white part. Yeah, you can actually see um, that there is a little bit an alternation of, of light and dark areas in a very regular way. And uh, these are the so-called light and dark bands, which are very typical of uh, um, yeah, of striated muscles, okay? Um, okay, a flatworm is also found in undercooked pork meat, yes. And as a matter of fact, um, there are uh, several parasites uh, that uh, can be found, uh, and that's why um, it's always a good idea to always cook uh, your meat uh, properly before before eating. Uh, I did a little bit of research, and I, I was able to um, find out that um, yeah, cooking kills off trichinella quite well, but not smoking, because sometimes uh, it's also possible to smoke the meat, but apparently this does not... Uh, not remove the worm. But um, yeah, we're not so much concerned about the muscle, actually, we're more concerned about the parasite. So let's try to find find one again. Okay, a uh, whole bunch of connective tissue. Uh, here, here is another one, okay? Here, again, yeah? Um, yeah, you see, it, this is, it's kind of a, a spiral. Uh, that's why it's called trichinella spiralis, yeah? Because it's, it's uh, um, spiral shaped, yeah? So that is, um, yeah. Um, a commercially prepared slide, uh, and that's, uh, uh, I think, one of the yeah, examples of where you're able to see uh, things that you're normally not uh, able to see, uh, because uh, if I were to prepare a slide like this, uh, how am I supposed to obtain the meat, uh, the pork? 
Yeah? Um, and uh, then you have to dehydrate everything. You have to use a microtome to cut it into very thin sections and, and so on. And that is all quite an elaborative, uh, elaborate process. Um, but uh, luckily these companies yeah, um, are able to do that. So here's another one. Yeah, I'd have to now, maybe let's go down a little bit with the magnification, okay? Um, maybe we get a better overview of, actually there, there are a whole bunch of them. There are two of them over here. Yeah, here, this one. This one is, is actually quite nice. Um, it looks like there are several dots here, okay? Those round circles that you see, um, this is uh, again the worm uh, which is spiraling, uh, but it was cut in such a way, uh, it was cut transversely uh, in a cross section. That's why there are those little circles, yeah, because it's like a spiral, but if you cut it across that, uh, uh, then you see those little circles here, yeah. And so again, let's go up with the magnification. Here it is, um, again, yeah. So, yeah, these are the cysts um, of uh, this parasite uh, embedded in, um, in uh, pork meat, yeah. So, um, because I still have 11, <laughs> I still have 11 <laughs> slides uh, to go, I just want to show you another one um, that I kind of find uh, quite nice. The testes of a mouse, how is that? Okay, um, the testes are the testicles of a mouse um, um, and uh, we're able to see some sperm cells here. Okay, so um, always when you um, exchange the slide, go down with the magnification. Let's remove this here. And uh, let's put this one in here, okay? Yeah, and uh, let's go up with the magnification and let's uh, refocus again. Yeah, the sperm cells in the testes are produced in so-called seminiferous tubules. And what we have here is, is we have all of those round structures that you see. These are the tubules in cross section, okay? Um, so you see that there are quite a few of them. And uh, not a lot to see yet, so we go up with the magnification here. So, and if you just look at uh, one of those seminiferous tubules, you're going to see that in the wall of them, there are those tiny little circles. And these are the individual cells. So this is evidently a, yeah, a stained, uh, stained specimen. And uh, yeah, what happens is, is that the sperm cells, um, they can be seen inside the white area. If you look into this white area there, um, in biology we call this the lumen, um, and uh, then you see those fine lines, and those fine lines are the tails of the sperm cells, okay? Um, so there is a question, do they also move like uh, corkscrews or do they wiggle like normal nematodes? That's a good question. I don't think that, I mean, I have to hypothesize now, um, because um, I think they must move when they're still in the intestine because they're um, kind of making a, um, um, yeah, a hole through the wall of the intestine into the blood. But then when they are in the, in, the, in, the, in the muscle, I read that they can be encapsulated there for many years. So I do not think that they're moving there. But actually, I think that they must be in some kind of a resting state waiting for the host, in this case, the human being, to be eaten by another animal um, so that the life cycle is completed. So you see, because human beings are not eaten by other animals normally, we're not really the the, not the normal host. Um, so it's kind of uh, what the, my research has shown is it's kind of weird, like a like a, a, a fake or false host, uh, uh, kind of as a side effect. We're being um, infected, so to say, but um, the life cycle cannot continue because uh, we humans are, um, yeah, are not eaten by other animals. Yeah, um, but that is actually otherwise it would be the normal way that uh, how the, uh, the those worms would reproduce. Yeah? And here, yeah, we're back to the um, to the back to the uh, back to the uh, testes here. Yeah, again, those fine lines that you see in the white area, these are the tails of the sperm cells. Yeah, um, and um, the sperm cell production starts um, on the outside of the seminiferous tubules. Again, one of the problems with this program is, is I, I cannot point toward it properly because see my finger disappears here a little bit. Yeah, but the, on the out the outside of the yeah, the tubule, this is um, where the sperm cell production starts and the cells start to divide. And on the inside, where the white area is, is this is when the finished sperm cells are then placed or made. And, and then they start to swim away. Yeah? So those fine lines in the center yeah, are hundreds, if not thousands of, of sperm cells. Here maybe we see it a little bit better. You know what, I might go up with the magnification yet further. Okay, so 60 times and refocus again all the time. Yeah, um, I might have to increase the con up. I, I always bump against the stage.
because I'm operating the microscope with my left hand, <laughs> not quite in, much in control. Yeah, so these are the, the sperm cells. So you see that the cells on the outside, in the wall of the seminiferous tubules, those round purple structures, they are still quite large. Yeah? But as the sperm cells are made, they become smaller. And then on the inside, this is when they are you know, finished. And here we see thousands and thousands of, of, of uh, sperm cells. Those lines are the tails of the sperm cells. Obviously, they're not moving uh, because this is a prepared, uh, prepared slide. Okay? Um, and uh, pro uh, properly stained, dehydrated. Look at them. Look at this here. So many of them. Yeah? The tails are all arranged next to each other. That's why they look uh, almost like, like in a pattern. Yeah, so this uh, the testes of a mouse. By the way, um, it doesn't really matter whether it's a mouse or any other mammal because uh, it all looks the same. Yeah? So in the case of, of human, uh, humans, it would look exactly the same. Yeah? It's a mammal and therefore yeah, there is a, a big similarity. Yeah? Okay, again, I need to go up a little bit with the brightness here. Yeah. Ah, I just also want to show you something else here, just as a little as a, as a side thing, um, because um, there is something red over here. Um, and these are blood vessels. Again, it's a little too dark. Um, so this uh, thing here, again, next uh, to my eyeglasses on the side, you see this red patch. Um, this is a blood vessel with uh, red blood cells. Okay, so just uh, yeah, just for your um, information. Yeah, um, I move on. Yeah. Time, time flies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in case you have any comments or any anything else. Yeah, so these uh, were basically now uh, two um, animal slides. Uh, one um, of the, my favorite ones um, are plant cross sections. The reason is uh, because plant cross sections, they look really beautiful on, under the microscope uh, because they have a very regular pattern. And this one over here is a sunflower, the stem of a sunflower. And over here, you can already see this oval structure. That is actually the stem which has been cut uh, yeah, um, transversely. And uh, let's have a look um, at uh, the pattern of the cells here because a sunflower is a so-called a dicot. Okay, I have to switch over here. I already put it in here. Okay, and uh, let's uh, have a look here. And those round structures that you see, these are um, this, the cells and uh, quite nicely visible the cell wall. I go down with the magnification now because we want to get a nice overview. And I need to flip this out here go back to bright field okay yeah so um, i'm going to give you a, bit, a rough overview so this is now one side of the stem and we're now going to the other side all of those round structures are cells and there's one thing that you already noticed there is a nice pattern here especially here on the outside yeah? this long line that you see here these are that's dust okay just ignore that yeah but uh, the cells are arranged in a very nice pattern yeah, yeah. On, on the outside yeah and these are the cells that are transporting uh, water and uh, sugar these are so-called the vascular bundles they are called and because a sunflower is a so-called a dicot um, the cotyledons these are the first the leaves that the plant forms and a sunflower has two of them and a dicot plant has those vascular bundles that transport um, the substance is uh, arranged in a circular manner like this. Wow, I've received a lot of comments now. Hello, just a quick question, and is it, it's a bit long. I'm currently doing my own sort of research hunting, okay, for worms in freshwater ponds. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, vascular bundles, yes. Um, on the family and have been successful with some. Okay, yeah, there has been... Um, some people are doing also a little bit of, of research on nematodes here. Yeah. So these are the vascular bundles, xylem and phloem, they're called. Xylem um, are the cells that transport the water up a plant. And phloem, too dark, uh, phloem um, are uh, those cells that uh, transport sugar from the leaves down to the roots. After all, don't forget, the roots cannot do photosynthesis. Uh, there, there is no sunlight there. They still need to grow. They still need energy. So where do they get the nutrients from? Well, they get the nutrients, the organic uh, the, the sh the sugar from the leaves, which were transported down. Yeah? Um, what you also have here um, on the outside are dividing cells called the cambium. The cambiums, are, these are cells that are dividing and which are uh, basically increasing the width um, of the plant. Yeah. 
So this is a sunflower and I like it because it looks so nice. <laughs> so what I usually do is, is uh, I take pictures of those, then I usually clean up, uh, you see all of this, the dust and uh, these things that you see out here, I usually remove digitally and then I have a nice picture that I can use as a desktop background um, or um, yeah, I make a poster to hang it, hang it up on the wall. Yeah. So um, maybe let's go up one further just for the fun of it. Okay, so. I want to now, um, even though I did not prepare it right now, I just wanted to show you um, now an, um, another sunflower um, one. It's not because it simply came into my mind right now. I'm going to show you over here. I'm going to move. Uh, there is another sunflower. Where is this? I thought there was a sunflower somewhere. If, sunflower here, number three. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you this one over here and you will see that it looks a little bit different and um, of course the stem it's difficult to see here it is much smaller that's not what I want to show you um, rather um, just remember a little bit how uh, and look how blue it is okay and and how much um, substance there is there substance yeah how it, it's a little bit. and now I'm going to show you this one over here and uh, I need to go down a little bit with the magnification otherwise I'm not able to find it here it is, refocus, more light. Yeah, It kind of looks a little bit thin, right? Okay, uh, why, why is that? Because it is thin. Um, I think that this uh, slide, the, di the thickness was, was much thinner. Okay, and therefore it does not uh, yeah, give it as much, um, yeah, I don't know, uh, fullness. Um, so it doesn't uh, quite look um, quite as, as um, yeah, as, as contrasty either. Yeah? But again, doesn't matter. You see again, the vascular bundles are on the side here. And you see that overall the slide quality is not so good. There is uh, quite a bit of dirt um, on here um, 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 as well. Yeah? So uh, per, uh, commercial uh, microscope slides, two different, two different quality. Just wanted to say that. Again, wow, lots of comments here. Um, why do you not use DIC for, um, for prepared slides? Because the effect is not quite as good uh, for whatever reason. I think this has to do something with the mounting medium, but I can show you. Um, there, it, it does work um, occasionally, but um, let's, uh, this is not bright field, okay? So I'm going to now use differential interference contrast. So I'm gonna put, the, put it in here. And uh, this is basically how it looks in DIC, okay? No, 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 I have to put in the condenser as well, as well. Okay, here we go. Um, and when I rotate now the yeah the the knob, yeah, yeah, it looks a little bit like this here. Yeah, I've seen uh, I find that the effect the 3D effect is a little bit stronger um, with uh, with uh, with other specimens. I think this has to do also a little bit with the mounting medium, but it, there is a little a small effect here as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. As you see, this is not basically uh, using DIC, but the DIC, the differential interference contrast, does take away uh, quite a bit of light as, as well. So generally what I recommend is you, you just got to experiment around um, which system or which illumination technique gives you the best results, okay? So, um, yeah, so this was uh, the sunflower. Um, remember now where the vascular bundles are. The vascular bundles are um, on the outside, okay? And now I'm going to show you um, another one, where is it? I don't have maize somewhere. Yes, it's down here. Um, in contrast, um, over here I have got maize and that is a monocot. Okay, and now let's have a look how the vascular bundles look here. Because this is a distinguishing criterion between monocots and dicots. These are the two, two important groups of flowering plants are the so-called the monocots and the dicots and the um, basically grasses yeah, that are, or they have um, yeah, small thin pointed leaves. These are the monocots and maize, corn for example as well. And those little structures that you see, these are the vascular bundles as well. And uh, here, where, where can they be found? Yeah, not only on, on the outside, but scattered throughout the whole stem, okay? Yeah. When I showed this to my students, they said, ah, this looks like little faces, <laughs> yeah, so. Um, there's a comment here, maybe because DSC uses polarized light, the mounting medium disturbs it, so maybe the mounting medium depolarizes it. That's that's possible. Okay, okay. 
So, pal yeah, most uh, chlorophyll is found in the palisade mesophyll of the leaves. Um, I don't have a leaf cross section right now here. It's somewhere in the box over there, but I can also show it to you. Okay. If not today, then in an upcoming live stream. Yeah? So let's try DLC here again. Okay. Uh, more light. Yeah. Yeah. Here, this effect is a little bit stronger. Yeah. But uh, the reason why I wanted to show this to you is not only because they, they, the cells could look kind of nice, but also because uh, under the microscope you are able to distinguish between different types of plants simply by the arrangement um, of those vascular bundles. So the cells that you see here, those uh, clustered together, they are responsible for transporting water um, up the plant, the xylem again, and the phloem, which transports sugar um, down the plant. Yeah. So, yeah. Next, next, next thing. Let's have a look. Uh, what else um, is there to look at today? So I looked at the sunflower maze. Oh yeah, um, roots. Um, this one is a, the cross section of a root. Um, um, yeah, also um, of a dicot. It looks uh, quite nice. There are actually two, uh, two of them here. Just want to show it to you. Um, simply also that you see um, how um, root uh, roots are different. Uh, so I have to find it now. Ugh. So I go down with the magnification. Maybe it's a little bit easier this way. I you know what? I have no idea. Ah, here it is, here it is, here it is. Because I'm not looking through the microscope, you know. Yes, that, that's it. Okay. So this here is the cross section of a root. And you see that there is um, also in the center something that looks a little bit like an X. Um, and that is, uh, again, the vascular bundle. So in, the, in a root, uh, the water is transported up the plant or away from the root uh, in the middle here, right? And all of those round, round structures, again, of course, are the cells. And I like this a lot because you can actually see um, also some of the cells' contents here. Again, DIC simply to check whether it works. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Not quite. Let's just stay with bright field. Yeah. And um, the w reason why the vascular bundle in a root is inside is because um, there is um, a layer of cells. Or, uh, where where is it again? Um, yeah, over there. Um, there's a layer of cells um, uh, of smaller cells uh, arranged in a circle around this uh, central vascular bundle, and uh, this is the so-called endodermis, and um, is responsible for controlling that uh, no harmful substances are able to reach the center of the root. Because if there are any harmful substances, um, then they should not be carried to the rest of the plant. So it is actually this endodermis which is responsible for um, yeah, making sure that no no harm harmful substances are able to reach the central vascular bundle here. Yeah. So this is, um, yeah, there was a second one as well. I don't know if it's on, the, yeah, here it is. Yeah, here, it's also quite nice. It's a slightly larger one. Yeah. yeah, all living things are made of cells, millions and millions and millions and mi many million, million, trillion cells. Um, I don't know what stain they used uh, to, to stain this, uh, but uh, unfortunately the, um, the slide does not indicate this. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's move on uh, to another one um, that I wanted to show you. Um, let's take this away again. What else do I have uh, here? So it's, this one I looked at maize, I looked at this, ah, yeah, another plant cross section that I caught again. Um, what I've done is this, um, I want to show this slide to you mainly for historical reasons, because many years ago, when I, I don't know, 20 years ago or so, when I started microscopy and when the microscopes, yeah, the, the imaging system, digital cameras were not really um, available yet, um, I actually made a stitched image of, of this one here, of the whole um, cross section of the stem. I'm just going to show it to you uh, using a webcam, <laughs> it was 640 pixels times 480 pixels, and I manually stitched it together. Um, in Photoshop, manually I, I combined everything, <laughs> and uh, it was a very it was I don't know it was several days work, uh, and um, this was actually this uh, yeah the cross section of this stem here. Yeah. I think I'm going to go down again with the magnification here. Okay, uh, this is how it looks like. Yeah. Looks very nice uh, from from the patterns. Again, all of those round structures that you see are, of course, the individual cells. And some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. 
And again, the vascular bundles and uh, due to the different color is of course, because they used uh, some kind of stain here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh, I just wanted to share this one with you because I have uh, some kind of a personal, <laughs> a personal connection to, to this uh, particular slide here. Even though I did not make the slide, um, I, this was one of the first ones that I used to, uh, to uh, yeah, to, to make nice pictures. I remember I, I spent, I don't know, days taking uh, taking a picture, overlapping pictures, and then manually put it together on, in Photoshop um, until I had the whole cross section. Yeah. Yeah, those are large vascular bundles. Yep. Yep. And as a matter of fact, you can also see, um, I think uh, uh, this must be in some kind of also the annual, um, annual rings you should be able to see as well. Yeah. So. Let's have another one. Okay, the next one. This is uh, actually a maze we talked about. Okay, the next one over here. Um, let's uh, leave the plants uh, again. This is a, is a nice one. It's a flea. Um, uh, f the flea of a dog. Okay. Um, yeah, it's also called a whole mount. So this means they simply dried the animal and they put it uh, yeah, on a microscope slide. And we're going to have a look at this one here. It's one of those nice ones to look at as well. So let's put it, and we have to find it again here. I have to center everything. Where is it? And then of course I have to focus, you know what? Always, if you cannot find it, go down with the magnification. Here we go. Okay, that is the flea. Oh my gosh, not enough light. And completely out of focus. Of course, an insect, we know that, uh, because it has six legs. Looks, uh, Looks quite nice. <laughs> Huge eye. Yeah. Of course, it's so-called an arthropod. So, and look at the gigantic hind legs here, because of course fleas are able to jump uh, quite well. Yeah. And uh, what do they do? Of course, they suck blood, and uh, then they jump uh, from animal to animal. And this one is the flea of a dog. Yeah, and. Uh, what you can do and uh, is, is you go up with the magnification again. Again, every time when you go up, the light intensity um, goes down. But there's something I want to show you here, something that I found out just recently. Let me find a good place here. Here, let's, let's look at this leg over here, right next again to my head, this bright part. Okay. Do you actually see those, uh, those uh, they look like parallel fibers kind of running? Yeah. These seem to be the muscles that are connected to the inside um, of the leg, to the inside of the exoskeleton. So, yeah, again here, because uh, yeah, if you look very carefully, yeah, so these seem to be the muscle fibers um, of um, yeah on, of the insect. After all, the, it's got to have pretty strong legs. Um, it's <laughs> jumping quite far. And uh, is this somewhere else? Um, it, it's a little bit difficult to see here now um, um, on my computer monitor and also on YouTube because of the uh, lower image quality. But if you really uh, look very carefully directly under the microscope, you're also able to see the so-called striations, the so-called the light and dark bands um, of the muscle, um, just like mammals. Uh, yeah, they have those light and dark bands, uh, which are. Uh, because the protein fibers, which slide past each other. I don't want to go too much into biology right now, um, but uh, usually if you're able to see those light and dark bands with your microscope, then this is a little bit of a, of a, of a quality test as well, whether your microscope is able to resolve those. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back out again a little bit um, with, you need to always adjust the light. Yeah. And, uh, um, it's usually those thick specimens or the thick hole mounts are a little bit more difficult uh, to observe because um, it's uh, almost not possible to have all parts in focus at the same time. Usually if one part is in focus then another part is not uh, in focus. Yeah? And uh, for preparing insects generally what um, you have to do as well is you have to kind of uh, bleach them um, or lighten them up. Uh, because otherwise many insects are simply too dark and you're not able to see anything at all. 
Yeah. So um, this can be done in several ways. Potassium hydroxide solution apparently bleaches quite well. Never used that before. Lactic acid apparently also bleaches uh, quite well. So you have to put the specimen a few days into lactic acid. Um, and this uh, also removes some of the pigments and uh, makes uh, the insect more transparent. Yeah. And then you somehow have to also make sure that there are absolutely no air bubbles inside uh, the specimen. Um, yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, otherwise the difference in refractive index makes it too dark. Yeah, yeah muscles with polarized light should glow up. Yes, um, my polarization system that I use um, is not a normal polarization system, but it's uh, adapted to DIC. Um, and as a matter of fact, even I remove the, polar, uh, res uh, the polar polarizing filter completely, yeah, then it looks a little bit more flat. Yeah, so indeed they do light up a little bit. Yeah. So this is now regular bright field again. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, quite uh, quite now you see over here it's it's already still too dark, too difficult to see. Yeah. So okay, this was uh, the dog flea. Um I still have a few samples to go that I want to show show you. Um okay, how many minutes now? Okay, I've been just half an hour now. So let's uh, go back here. What else do I have? This was the dog flea. Ah, the head of a fly. <laughs> yeah, um, that's also a nice one, uh, which I want to show you. Um, because normally fly head, yeah, it's, uh, the way that you see a fly head, which you normally don't see. Here it is. Again, out of focus because it's been microtomed. So it's again a, a cross section. Here we go. Um, I'm going to go down with the magnification again. I'm going to sw swing out the condenser up with light here. Here we go. Yeah. So this here is, uh, yeah, the cross section of the head of a fly. Yeah. And you can see the trunk of the fly as well, which also has been uh, microtomed, cut very thin. And uh, this, um, as a matter of fact, it was a pretty difficult specimen to take a picture of. Uh, some years ago, I tried to also make a, a stitched uh, picture. This means a co complete picture which, with, with all of the parts. And it was difficult because this part here at the top is very dark, um, almost black. So I had to expose it more. And uh, over here, the, the, the yeah. The proboscis, basically the, the place uh, where the mouth parts here are very bright um, and uh, they were then overexposed. So it was a little bit uh, difficult to get the exposure right uh, in, in all, yeah, of all of these parts. And then you see over here on, on the side, all of the dirt and the dust I had to Photoshop that away. Yeah. So it was quite a bit of um, yeah, um, <laughs> manual, uh, manual uh, picture editing uh, was necessary. Yeah. The interesting thing about those uh, commercially prepared slides is that, uh, of course, uh, no, two, no, no two of them are the same. Um, so this means that uh, if you have uh, several of these slide boxes uh, to be used in education, um, different slide boxes show the same specimen slightly differently. And um, there was an interesting uh, yeah, question or debate um, that I, um, not a debate really, uh, interesting uh, discussion I had with a former student of mine and she was studying medicine or is still studying medicine. And of course I also asked her a little bit, is, are you also doing microscopy work? And I says, yeah, of course, a lot of microscopy work. And then I asked her, well, I mean, these days, uh, I mean, you've got high quality scans um, of, uh, of all possible things that you want to look at, of, of, of tumors, of tissue sections, and, and of, I don't know, yeah, why, why do you guys still use a microscope? Uh, of course, I was provoking a little bit because you have all of the pictures available anyway for studying. You just might look at them um, on your mobile phone and zoom in on them on the mobile phone and you can add labels and, 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 and so on. And uh, then she said something quite interesting. She says, of course, all of this exists already. Yeah, and many universities actually do use that. But still, um, if you use a microscope, then this connects you much more to the specimen that you're actually uh, observing. Because right now I'm looking at a real fly head. Yeah, and yeah and not just only um, at an image. 
I mean, this is, of course, it is an image here, yeah. But uh, it's a real fly head um, um, under the microscope that I have right now. Yeah? And this is also a psychological effect a little bit. Yeah? And she also said then uh, simply by using the microscope and by, by focusing and by moving it around and so on, um, this is all very important um, yeah, because uh, there's this form of interactivity that you have that you normally then do not have if you only look at uh, digitized slides. Yeah. So let's have a look, uh, another look um, at something else. Fly head. Over here, yeah, uh, this one, is, look at this, isn't this huge? This is a pine, a pine flower cross section. It's, it's a huge one, yeah, several centimeters, two centimeters across. Um, um, and uh, I like this a lot because uh, I actually use this uh, to, yeah, make a picture to hang up in my living room. So let's have a look at it again here under the microscope. I already put it in now. And here we go again. Okay, I gotta go down again with the uh, magnification. All of those red dots are of course the individual cells and those white round structures, those white round oval structures, these seem to be the ova, the egg cells, okay? And so they will actually form the seeds um, yeah, of, of the pine. Um, this dark line that you see over here, this dark area, um, this is uh, where <laughs> there is a fold in the specimen. So the specimen was is so thin, very very thin, and it was kind of folded back onto itself, and therefore it's uh, yeah it looks like this. So it was not completely spread flat on the slide. Yeah. yeah so yeah, if you just look at this, how many how many cells there are. Yeah. We go up with the magnification again. Refocus. Um, in the good old days of microscopy, when I say the good old, good old days, I'm talking about a couple hundred years ago. Um, the scientists, when they looked at uh, um, um, yeah, at specimens, they were mostly fascinated by the cell wall, uh, and uh, because uh, with their microscopes, the, the cell wall was the pro most prominent structure that was visible. Um, so at that time I read uh, there was a debate going on. Is, is the cell wall actually the living part of an organism? And are, is the contents, which they had difficulty seeing, just basically hollow, just like a sponge? So there was actually a debate going on for some time. What is now actually the living part of, of, of a cell? Is it the cell wall yeah. or is it the content? Because there was a huge fascination with the cell wall at that time because simply it was uh, the most visible uh, one thing structure with a microscope yeah yeah so you see um, as you go on and on and on it's a huge uh, specimen but i want to show you now something uh, a poster i took a picture some time ago i'm going to show you a short video now yeah because this is now yeah a picture that i took uh, and i had it printed and i hung it up in my living room yeah? um so it's, it's quite nice yeah here here it is again yeah? so you can um it's a little bit like modern art. Yeah? You've got people asking, what does this actually show? Yeah, then you can actually tell them <laughs> what it is. Yeah? I just wanted to share this uh, with you um, um, as well. Yeah? Do you have any tips on slicing plants really thin for microscopy? Um, you know what, I'm gonna do, I think, a, a separate video on that. Yes, uh, you can make hand cuts. Um, just using your hand, it takes a lot of patience, it takes a very steady hand, but the easiest way is to use a simply a, a table micro or hand microtome. Um, you do not need to prepare it a lot. Uh, what you do is you take uh, the, the plant material, the stem, you squeeze it in between two pieces of carrot. Yeah, as, as, a, as, a, yeah, as a holder um, to hold it and then you can use, up to use a very sharp knife and then you're able to, to, to slice it. Yeah? And uh, so this is a possible, um, but um, it, uh, and it gives reasonably good results. Um, and I think I'm gonna do a separate video on this, at least I plan to do that, yeah? Using microtomes, uh, table microtomes. Yeah? So um, yeah, so this was uh, basically the female flower um, of a pine, um, yeah, of a pine female flower, and we also have a male flower, which is the next one. Here it is. And why is this so dark? Ah, because I'm 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 totally <laughs> uh, on, I'm on the label. <laughs> was uh, microscoping the label, so looks very different. And what do you think these little round thingies are? These are of course the pollen grains. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, of course, pollen grains that you have here. Yeah? And uh, yeah, the pollen grains uh, will then pollinate uh, the female flower and then there will be fertilization and then you have a seed and uh, yeah. So here, these are the pollen grains. Yeah. So in order to make uh, um, such a section, such a prepared mound like this, uh, this is uh, um, an elaborate process, okay? Um, it has to be completely dehydrated, the specimen, you have to embed it in paraffin. But simple cuts using, uh, as I just mentioned, you can do that also directly without any uh, preparation using a, using a table or hand microtome not a table microtome, a small hand microtome, um, this works. But if you really want to get very high quality um, specimens like this one over here, um, it's, uh, it's got to be properly embedded and properly stained and all of these things. Yeah? And the paraffin has to be removed. And this is a, somewhat of a challenge because during the dehydration process, when you remove the water, there's of course always the danger that the, the specimen starts to shrink. I have a question not about these slides. Uh, are all dinophysis toxic? Oh, honestly, I have no idea. Um, you see, um, if you, um, hmm, uh, if, I, I'm, I'm often asked similar questions um, um, by, by my students. Are all of these plants poisonous or all of these um, yeah, bacteria dangerous and so on? And, um, uh, I will be. Uh, I I always give an answer, which is kind of uh, when I don't know the answer, I, I give an answer which is still correct. It says nature is so diverse um, that um, I would be surprised if there are some that are not toxic and many that, that are, and some of them might be toxic to some organisms but not to other organisms. So nature is so diverse that a lot depends. Um, I would say. Yeah? Um, I'm always a little bit skeptical with the words all, because if you say all are all toxic or is everything yeah, like this, if you find only one instance where this is not the case, okay, uh, then the statement is already wrong. Um, so um, I always try to kind of navigate myself out of these questions by saying, well, it depends, you know. Yeah? Um, so this is a little bit, uh, um, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but the real answer is, is I don't know uh, the answer to this question here. Yeah, yeah in any case, uh, these are um, yeah, the pollen grains. Let's move on. I have uh, two more that I want to show you. Potato. Now, I've already made a few videos uh, before on uh, where, uh, where I put potato starch grains under the microscope. And all you have to do is, is you have to scratch the surface of a potato and especially under polarized light uh, you can see those nice starch grains yeah okay another question when you want to identify fungi the microscope is very helpful sometimes even necessary is this uh, the same with plants or all of most of them identified by micro oh, okay i'm um, so why okay um do you happen to have a diatom arranged slide no i don't have diatom uh, arranged diatom slides unfortunately not Okay, and I've also not tried to do it myself, so I will talk about this. Um, you know what, I'll first talk about those potato starch grains a little bit, and then I want to talk about those questions because I think that they're also kind of interesting. Um, so this here is a, um, a slide of a potato. Um, those pink structures, these are the starch grains, and the blue thing that you see in the background, these are the individual cells. I like this slide a lot because it kind of shows that the starch grains are inside the cells. Because when you prepare starch grains by scratching the surface of a potato, then you don't see the cells anymore, obviously. Yeah? Um, but here it kind of shows the arrangement of the starch grains and uh, the cells. Yeah? I don't know what stain they used. I don't think that it is iodine because iodine does not stain uh, uh, pink. It stains purple. Yeah. Um, so, and unfortunately, the information is not given on the slide. Yeah. So lots of starch in, in a potato. Um, and um, yeah, let's do the following here. Yeah. When you rotate, uh, when I rotate the, the polarization, you're able to see how the starch grains also start to uh, change their, uh, go up with the yeah, thing a little bit more. Yeah, because those starch grains are polarizing. Do you see that? Yeah. It's not only the background color that changes now, but also look, uh, look at the starch grains themselves. So uh, starch grains are very nice uh, specimens uh, to observe under polarized light. Yeah. 
So uh, I want to ask, uh, not ask, I want to um, address some of the questions um, in the chat here. When you want to identify fungi, the microscope is very helpful, sometimes even necessary. Um, yeah, can be, but it always depends on to what level do you want to identify it. Uh, because if you go down microscopically a lot, what I heard, again, I'm not a fun uh, fungus expert, fungi can really change their shape quite a bit depending on the environment. Um, so um, apparently it is difficult, I mean, it depends to what level do you want to identify the fungi. If you want to go down all the way to the, I don't know, species level, I can imagine that from a point onward, the microscope might not help anymore because you're not able to dis uh, discern or to see the important distinguishing characteristics, okay? Um, for example, with bacteria, a microscope is very useful for characterizing the bacteria, but not so much for identifying them because there is simply not enough information. Um, so it's a little bit like the analogy that I always give, just by looking at the color of a car, uh, I'm not able to determine which brand of car it is, okay? Um, and it's a little bit like this um, also with uh, microscopy, simply by looking at the um, individual cells, um, it's not possible to sometimes it, uh, say what it is, okay? I'm able to say, okay, it's a fungus, that's easy, or it's a bacterium, that's easy, but then if you go further, um, even bacteria that are very different from each other can have a very similar shape and vice versa. Um, so it really depends a lot. Uh, but the question is, is uh, can you do the same with plants? Um, basically, um, I, I, will, I will do the following. Um, I've, I've been at a botanical excursion once and uh, with a botanist and he basically was able to identify all of the plants macroscopically simply by looking at the plants and even highly related ones and he picked them apart and looked at it under the lens and then he says, ah yeah, it's this one. So even with plants, if you go very specific with some uh, species, um, there can be very, very detailed characteristics that are different that you will need a lens to see the differences. Yeah, And he said that he, he gave this as an example for a very um, specific uh, um, botanical example where you can identify things macroscopically. Yeah? Um, again, I do not have a arranged uh, diatom slides. Um, I need to also explain what this is. Um, back in the 19th uh, century, um, maybe even the 20th century, there's been a, a popular hobby among microscopists. Um, and that is, they took eyelashes, their own eyelashes, which are very thin and pointed, and they arranged the diatom shells on a microscope slide to make permanent mounts. They arranged them in a very nice pattern. If you Google it, then you're able to also find some, some of these pictures. Um, these are also collector's items. Um, what I heard, not quite cheap because they're kind of, yeah, they're collector's items, but they look very nice because the diatom shells are arranged in a very nice pattern. And this has all been done manually. It must have been a really pain, <laughs> time consuming and very painstaking uh, taking work. Unfortunately, I don't have, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I use my microscope to identify fungus and mushrooms uh, to the, um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, like to know a little bit more about that, um, yeah. Um, to the species level, oh cool. Um, so I guess it depends. Uh, with bacteria, it's not possible to go all the way down to the species level. Uh, you have to do um, so biochemical analysis. Yeah? Um, the size of the spores and stuff like that stays the same. Yep, yeah, spore size, the conidia. Um, so there is uh, a possibility to to do this as well. So last one that I have over here is uh, wood. Okay, um, wood. Here we go. Uh, there are different uh, cross sections again. It's a pine wood. And uh, I also like this one because it looks nice. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, again, nicely arranged cells. And look how the cells are more dense on one side. And then they become less or smaller. And I think these are the, the, these are the annual rings. Every year there's a new ring. Yeah. yeah. As, uh, as the tree grows, it adds one ring, yeah? And uh, I think it's an interesting way. You can actually count the number of cells. I actually did count this, uh, well, I don't know, over 30 cells uh, were made in one year. Yeah, It was actually growing yeah, in width 30 cells. So that is one uh, cross section, but there are actually more cross sections here on this slide. Yeah? Here, there's another one. Yeah. Cut in a different way. And you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna go back again here. Maybe we go up a little bit. And um, look look at the extremely thick cell wall. Yeah. 
there must be lots of lignin in, in there. Lignin is, is, is the chemical name for wood. Yeah. So the cell walls in, 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 in wooden plants, of course, uh, have been strengthened by, by lignin. Yeah. And uh, look how rapidly the, the size of the cell, cells changes here. Yeah. So and uh, then again, different cross section. Yeah, this is this one over here. The wood was cut in a different way. I tried to do this also myself um, to uh, cut wood. Very difficult, of course, because of the hardness of the wood. And uh, yeah, so I think you do need a, a really proper microtome and a very sharp knife yeah, to do that. Maybe also possibility to soften the wood a little bit. Some experimentation is necessary, but. Uh, but I think uh, this uh, yeah, here again, it's a little bit less dense. And where is the other one? So there were three cross sections. Here it is. Here we're back again here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is basically, yeah. Let me see. Do I have any more more of them left over? I think these were all of the slides already that I wanted to show you. Yeah. Let's see if there's something else in here. Yeah, but generally uh, what I recommend, if you don't have a, a slide box yet, and uh, um, yeah, you can, um, those slide boxes can be ordered also over Amazon. Uh, the quality varies, of course, but generally I recommend to, uh, to have one um, at home anyway, because sometimes there are, I don't know, family members, friends or so, they want to actually also, you also want to show them your microscope and then um, a slide box is very useful. You just pull out a slide and just show it to them and it's yeah, nice to look at. Um, yeah, so over here, um, those uh, things that are in here, yeah, they've got an assortment of plants and uh, the abbreviation WM, yeah, whole mound CS is cross section, um, LS longitudinal sections and so on. Yeah, so they're, they've all been cut differently. Um, I think that the, um, there is a difference in slide quality. Um, some slides are a little bit dirtier than others, <laughs> so they, um, there's a lot much more dust in the background than others. But as, uh, generally, I think, uh, yeah, um, if you take pictures, you have to photo do some Photoshop editing anyway. Um, and then I also remove the dust uh, to make nice uh, prints if this is something that you want to do. Yeah, I've been experimenting around with uh, with this uh, quite a bit, uh, but uh, in recent uh, months, I've spent actually more. Um, time uh, doing YouTube videos and live streams now as well and not so much on, on doing picture editing. Yeah, um, is there anything else? Uh, how many minutes now? It's almost one hour again, okay. Um, yeah, if you have any comments or any requests, uh, then please also do leave comments. It does not have to be in the live stream here um, alone, uh, but uh, later on the video will be um, also uh, made available online if everything works out <laughs> and then there's also the possibility to post comments and if you have any requests uh, for any yeah, specific slides that you want me to put on the microscope then of course i'm open uh, for this as well um, otherwise i'm going to just leave it at that right now um, yeah I, I guess uh, i have to think of a new topic also for next week again uh, then i'll try to do another one um, but for the day, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I wish you all the best. Yeah, yeah, I wish you all the best. Uh, enjoy microscopy. Happy microbe hunting as always. And then, yeah, hopefully see you again next week. Okay, bye-bye. Uh,